ideas are common and we all have ideas, the real success comes in organizing them and executing them. You'll see that pattern with this show. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is the vibe here. Be sure and check out the older episodes too, including the ones that I just linked to before. All right, so let's get into it. If you have any questions as far as how you're trying to organize your thoughts, organize your mind, get kind of get your stuff together, <laughs> try not to curse today, <laughs> trying to keep a PC or PG at least, then please throw something in the comments. Let me know how I can support. All right, so the first question, only two questions today, but it's a lot of material. The best tech to organize my ideas. I get this question, like I said, a lot, mostly because my background, some of it is technology. I sold my last startup. It was a tech startup. And also because, again, I do so many different things. And, you know, my wife and I's kids are 10 and 7. So we're still kind of in that thick of things where they need us a lot. How do you organize all those different things? My favorite recommendation, in fact, one of my favorite, I should say, they're all my favorite. Otherwise, I wouldn't share them. <laughs> I'm being silly now. Is Trello. Trello is actually relatively old school. Trello helped me and my two co-founders keep our stuff together when we rolled our startup to the number one app twice back in 2014, 2015. That's how far back Trello goes. And that organization helped lead us to get the app to be acquired in 2015. What I love about Trello, it's, it's a couple different things. Let me get an overall description. Trello allows you to quickly organize things into lists. So if you think of like to-do lists, it could be a to-do list or it could just be a list. You can organize the list into different lists. So they come out as columns. Once you see the columns, then you can rearrange the columns, but it's all in the app, which makes it a lot easier, right? So that's number two or sorry, that's number one, is how it's organized. The benefits of that is, number one, you can break down how you organize the list as far as checking things off. So you can have check boxes. You can move one item to another item. You can get into, when we get nerdy for a second with technology, you can even do nested loops or nested, um, and the average person would call them like, a, um, like an outline. So you know the old school outline that you might have done like, in uh, at university or in college or even in high school where you have the first ones and i think it's the roman numerals and then you go a little bit deeper and then it's uppercase letters and you go a little bit deeper and then it's numbered a little bit deeper and i think it's the lowercase letters if i remember correctly and you can correct me in the comments you could set it up like that trello worked really well for us because we were a remote startup with my last startup cuddler i was based in san diego my main collaborator was based, I won't say in Bath, but in, 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 the, uh, in the UK. And then our other collaborator was based in either Toronto or in Montreal, I wanna say Montreal. And so we were on all kinds of different time zones. In fact, I talk about that in the Bites Entrepreneur, which is also included in here, where I would get up at 3.15 in the morning and work from 3.15 to 4 a.m. And at 4 a.m. most every day, I would have lunch, quote unquote, 4 a.m. my time in San Diego with my main collaborator, who again was based in Bath or the greater UK. Because it was 12 o'clock, one o'clock his time. <laughs> Think about it, it's like eight, nine hour difference. We were able to organize those things. Number one, thank God for Skype or Zoom. I can't remember what we used at the time. I want to say Skype, because Zoom, I don't think was popping quite yet in 2015, 2014, but also, we were able to use Trello because we were able to quickly organize things and it was totally asynchronous. Be sure and check out the link. This link will actually give you, I wanna say a month free of their higher plan. Frankly, a lot of the work that we did was actually in their free plan. Excuse me, it was either their free plan or their very low cost plan. It's super straightforward, really easy to use. I also love their app too, because we were using it on the computer but then when I started traveling more and doing a lot more as a co-founder of Cuddler, then I was actually able to get onto my iPhone. I'm guessing it's on Android as well. Everything's below. It's one of my favorite apps, period. It works really well. And again, it's really affordable. So if you're bootstrapping as we were with my first solo startup, as well as again, Cuddler, the uh, co-foundership that I did, if you're bootstrapping, then you definitely want to check out Trello if you want to organize 
again, your dispersed workforce. This is well before the pandemic. So I'm sure a lot more of y'all are dispersed. <laughs> we're doing we're doing the virtual stuff before the mask. And so and so now it's even more valuable. Do not sleep on Trello. It's a fantastic opportunity. Another one, I was just talking to a coaching client about it uh, recently. And I remember hearing about it a few years back and they blossomed, they bloomed. Otter AI, which as it implies is AI, does one simple thing really, really well, has a bunch of features, the best feature. It will automatically transcribe whatever you're saying. Otter AI will automatically transcribe whatever you're saying. So I learned about it when I was speaking at conferences or when I was attending conferences. And then they're like, hey, if you want the captions to this, just click on this for Otter AI. And I was like, what's that? And I click on it. And as I'm speaking or as I'm watching someone else speak and I want to see the captions, sometimes my family and I does a, do the captions because everyone's hearing is at a different level. And, you know, sometimes the kids are talking. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's the vibe. Sometimes you're in a noisy area. So I love captions. Shout out to the people that, that rely on captions. I try to make sure as much as possible, I caption in many different languages the stuff you see on bringingwork.tv. Trying to support y'all for all the different abilities that we have. Soapbox aside, <laughs> really important point, but soapbox aside, Otter AI, now it's set up, which is why I'm giving you the info on it, the goods, is that now it's set up so that it ties into, similar to Zapier, if you're on the tech side and you're used to doing that, or other types of platforms like Slack, it will actually start to communicate with the different apps you use. Good example of this. I had a, uh, I do usually do my coaching calls like on Zoom or on Skype or sometimes on FaceTime, whatever my clients need, sometimes over the phone. If I'm having a coaching call, I can tie Otter AI to my Zoom account. And then as soon as the coaching call is done, then it'll go and say, okay, this is a conversation with Damon and so-and-so, and it'll all be transcribed. Now, if you've coached with me, if you want to learn more about my coaching, just go to damonbrown.net or click the links below. When I coach with someone, I usually give them, we have a coaching session and I give them like resources and or a package with breaking down like, this is what we talked about. These are your call to actions. We call them CTAs, right? These are your call to actions. These are your concerns. These are the things we talked about. Just kind of like an overview post-mortem of that particular session we had. And if we have multiple sessions, then it becomes like a, um, a catalog for you to lean on. Even if we don't coach in the future, you'll have that resource forever, right? This takes it to a whole nother level. So that's just one aspect, just, well, two aspects. Number one, me as a public speaker, and if you're doing public speaking or st stuff like that, have your stuff automatically transcribed so that everyone can be involved, not just the people that are of strong hearing. That's a plus. Number two, you have the opportunity to use AI in your particular work or practice. In my case, I have a coaching practice. So now I can automatically transcribe the many, you know, I have co coaching sessions that are 45 minutes long. So it's like 45 minutes, which usually about 6,000 words, maybe a little bit more, maybe 8,000 words, depending how fast we talk. I'm from Jersey, so I talk fast. But ends up being six to 10,000, six to 10,000 words. They're all transcribed by AI. The third thing here, which I think is really important, and that's one, one of the recent conversations I had, is that Otter AI gives you the opportunity to get your thoughts down without having to transcribe them. And if you think about, I'm middle-aged, so if you think about if you're of my generation, like, like uh, young Gen X or older, you know when people had the commute and they were driving somewhere, and I'm thinking of like LA out here out west, and you know, folks will have like the tape recorder and they're like, when I get to the office, this such and such and such. Watch some of the old school movies from the 80s and 90s. You'll see a lot of that. People suck in traffic and they'll probably be usually a guy, unfortunately, but things will become more equitable. But it'll be a business guy, you know, and he's like, when I get to the office, I'll have Susan, do blah, 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 whatever. Or this is the memo I'm going to write to my client as soon as I get there because we didn't have cell phones at the time, right? Believe it or not. This is that energy to a whole different level. And so now you're able to go and say, oh, I have this idea that I wanna get down. 
why don't I open up Otter AI has an app now too, which again, this is all new stuff. I was a, the old wave of Otter AI a couple years ago. It has a new app, new to me at least, a new app. And you can go ahead and just speak into the app and it'll transcribe it for you. My background is journalism, two degrees in journalism, master's in magazine publishing. I am a writing nerd. I, I'm That muscle is like super heavy in me where I have, a, I have a big idea and I'll write it down. Other people though, perhaps like yourself, are trained in a different way. Perhaps you're used to speaking whatever you have to say, but not writing it down. Sometimes you have big ideas, but then your memory might not be that good. I have my issues too, so I'm not judging you. <laughs> your memory might not be that good. And then it suddenly it goes away and you're like, oh, what did I say? Out of AI. Just, just literally say it. And then it will capture it. And I believe it also has translation functions. This is a referral link. Most of these are, which means that I get support for the channel, but more importantly, you get support as far as getting special bonuses. I think with this currently, it actually allows you to, I think you get a month free. I try not to say these out loud because some, some of y'all are watching the replays like in the future you're like, Damon, where's, where's the hookup? As of right now, September 26, 2023, the hookup is there. <laughs> so be sure and check it out. Again, I'm, I'm gushing over it because Adder AI was a lot more focused. See my shirt? It was a lot more focused a few years ago. And then I came back to it in recent weeks and I'm like, oh, whoa, you've stepped up. And it's very much of this energy and of this generation. Shout out to y'all. It's fantastic. I can't, I can't uh, argue more for it. All right. And one that I've talked about quite a bit over the last summer is Notion. Again, folks of my generation, or if you're doing startups about a decade ago, then you've heard of something called Evernote. Evernote, <clears throat> excuse me, Evernote allows you to grab what they would call mixed media. So you find a website. Okay, well, you can put the link in there and the website is captured in there, just the text if you want. And then you might see an app. So you find the link for the app and then the info on the app is captured in there. You might see a picture online or a GIF. You drag that in there. All those mixed media are captured and organized in that. Evernote was the app for that for years. Then they changed their model. They had business model issues. I think they had some liquidity issues. And I'm not even sure if they're around anymore. Sorry, guys, but some startups don't make it. I don't know if they're still around. If they are around, I think they got acquired. And then there's some funny stuff going on there. A lot of people that were on Evernote have moved over to Notion. Notion has this AI setup that will help you organize your different thoughts and ideas. Again, one of the motivations for doing this episode, about organizing your mind with AI. It also has those traditional features that, again, the more old school folks like myself who remember Evernote, it has that kind of functionality too. So you could be in a particular tab, you pull tab as far as in your, your um, uh, on, uh, on the web browser, you pull that in, it'll hook it up. It might even be able to translate it for you and all these different things. So look at it. Again, if you're familiar with Evernote, look at this as a souped up version of that. It's also really good with collaborations, which is how I've been talking about a lot over the summer. If you're doing the startup thing, when it comes to organizing your mind, sometimes it's not just your mind. Sometimes, again, I've co-founded startups where it was three people. So you got to have a collective mind, a hive mind in a good way. This can help you organize all those different things. Are there apps that I'm missing? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what, what you guys think of the apps that I suggested and just other things that, uh, that you think would hit really well. One of my favorite books, if you're feeling overwhelmed by all the big ideas that you have, it's called Essentialism by Greg McEwen. One of the reasons why I have my focus shirt on. One of my favorite books. Oh, I do have it here. <laughs> I, I wasn't kidding with y'all. Like I got like, I got like half of my 40 books still here. <laughs> Essentialism, fantastic book, fantastic. What I love about this book is that there's one line in there that I say all the time, again, if you coach with me, you've heard it from my mouth. And that is, if you prioritize everything, then nothing is a priority. If you prioritize everything, then nothing is a priority. One of the biggest gifts you can give yourself, you can give to the people that you serve, Perhaps even give to the people that you love <laughs> if you're driving driving them up the wall is to figure out what those top, say three, three is a good number, those top three priorities are. 
I know for myself, it's my personal health, it's the health and wealth of my family, and it's serving y'all with the businesses, uh, including this TV show, Bring Your Worth TV, that I create. Those are my three uh, priorities. And depending on what's going on, they sometimes shift a little bit. Like my kids were sick last week, they had a cold, they're back at school. If you got kids in school, you know the deal. The first couple of weeks, they're, they're bringing home everything. I don't know if they're licking, licking the tiles there or whatever, but every kid brings home like some type of cold. So last week, even though I was hanging out with y'all, my big priority was taking care of my sick kids who were throwing up a little bit and stuff like that, make sure they were good. In some cases, as I've had sinus issues and other things, as I've talked about on the live show, then sometimes my health has to become the priority. That's why I have episodes where I talk about taking naps and resting and finding balance. It's not just me trying to philosophy, if I guess the word, me trying to philosophy about what you should do. It's more because of the hard knocks that I've had and figuring things out. And of course, in some cases, as with, I don't know, I decided to come live with y'all every weekday this month. <laughs> and sometimes at 1, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time, during the weekdays, y'all are the priority. It's not saying that you have to have the same fixed priorities. That's my point. What I love about this discussion is saying you have to be conscious about what your priorities are. That That's it. That's the big argument of this book. Because you could say your priority is this, that, and the third. But if it's not actually your priority, that will come across in your actions and the end of being scattered. If my kid is puking right now, then I'm not hanging out with y'all. I'd be like, sorry, there's no live show today. That's called a priority. <laughs> and so you have to make those decisions. And frankly, this year and some other years too, but even this year for me, sometimes those priorities come in conflict. Essentialism talks about what to do when you're in those situations. I bring this up because organizing your mind isn't just about having a filing system. It's also about creating an environment where you know really quickly how and when you are going to prioritize something. So again, if my kids are sick, I'm not hanging out with y'all. Sorry. <laughs> you know. But if I have a coaching client, coaching client and my kids are okay, then I'm hanging out with y'all 100%. Those are priorities. Essentialism is basically saying what is the main way that I'm going to live my life? What am I prioritizing in my life? And how can I design my life to keep it at the top? That's the best way I can describe it. Just grab the book. Fantastic book. One of my favorites. Live Q&A. A handful of months ago. Smart AI tools for creators 2023. There's a whole other set of tools that I talk about in that episode. Be sure and check it out. <laughs> if you're like, no, Damon, I'm fine. I'll buy Essentialism, but I need some AI in this. This is the episode. It also links to another episode where I talk about how I've used AI to refurbish my books to make animations, and I am not an animator. Shout out to, to my elders who are, who are artists. Again, the gift did not come to me that way. <laughs> I'm good with the words. I'm not so good with the pen to paper, you know, drawing things, that, that's just not my vibe. I certainly try, but it's not my vibe. If you're also in that camp, <laughs> and, you, and you can barely draw a stick figure, be sure check we got this episode. Sometimes drawing things, uh, quite literally, will help you get to where you need to be. And AI can help you organize your mind so that you can draw a better conclusion. Sorry for the double entendre. <laughs> when, when it comes to uh, using the best tech to organize your ideas, also check out Get Organized Now. It's actually an episode just from a few weeks ago. In fact, it was one of the first lives I did this month as part of this marathon. <clears throat> and um, it was re really well received. And y'all seem to like have, having like a behind the curtain, behind the camera, or whatever you want to call it, of uh, breaking down how I actually organize different things. So today we're talking about things to organize your mind, particularly your ideas. That episode is literally about organizing your office, organizing the data, like very practical. Again, I appreciate all the feedback that y'all gave during that episode, even with the replays, because I'd love to know what support you guys needed. And evidently, you guys need some office support, as I often need. <laughs> so, again, I told you, I told you, my, my desk is a mess after having that that uh, forty books and forty 
five minutes yesterday. <laughs> if you're curious about that, be sure and like check out the link below. And uh, yeah, what tech tools are you guys using to keep things in order? It's the Bring Your Wish Show every Wednesday and Sunday, 11 p.m. Standard Time, Vegas Time. Subscribe for free. And today, today, 